Hi guys, we are currently reading The Barren Grounds by David A. Robertson and we are on chapter five. This is part two, second video for chapter five. We have Eli and Morgan in the hidden attic, or not hidden, but forbidden, I guess. They're not supposed to be up there. It's getting renovated and there's some stuff up there that maybe is a bit hazardous or unsafe. Uh, some, you know, wires that are exposed, uh, maybe some pieces of glass, some pieces of, you know, cut up wood and stuff like that. However, they've uh, found a little area that they both can sit in. Uh, Morgan is reading her book and Eli is sitting there with his drawing pad, kind of considering what it is that he wants to draw. Okay, so I'll just start on page 39. Uh, bottom paragraph. After that, Morgan gave most of her attention to her book, and she could tell that Eli was giving his attention to the empty page in front of him, full of possibilities. For a good while, the only sound was the flip of a page. Morgan figured that Eli was taking his time, thinking of the perfect thing to draw for his first work of art in the new book. She bet that he felt the same excitement she felt on the first page of a novel. The prospect of a new world. Finally, out of the corner of her eye, she saw his pencil hit the blank white page, as white as the blizzard she pictured first thing that morning. As soon as it did, loose strands of hair swayed in front of her face. She blew them off to the side and kept reading. Moments later, her hair was in her face again. This time, she had felt a subtle breath cool against her skin. Would you stop that, she asked. Stop what? Blowing on me, obviously. I wasn't blowing on you, he said. I'm just sketching something. Morgan peeked over at Eli's drawing and immediately forgot everything. It looked like he was creating some kind of figure. Not a human, but something that walked on two legs. What are you drawing? She asked. Eli, Eli stared at it as, as though he didn't... Eli stared at it as though he hadn't just drawn it. I don't know, he said. I'm kind of just making it up, I guess. Cool. She nodded her head, impressed. Even just the start of it was awesome. The few pencil strokes he'd made to start to create the humanoid animal. It looked just as good as anything in the other drawing pad, the one involved in the hit and run. One last look, and she went back to reading. She got a lot more reading done when she was up there alone, she realized. But I, for sure, am earning some good karma, she thought. She hadn't gotten more than a line into reading when, again, cool air rushed against her cheek, this time stronger than before. Okay, Morgan slapped her book shut and slammed it against the floor. A cloud of dust erupted from, a from the plywood and danced in the darkening light. I was cool with it. Now, I'm not. Eli dropped his pencil, as if it were burning his skin. I'm just this close. Morgan pinched her index fingertip furiously per close to her thumb. Just like this. To revoking your secret room privileges, Eli. I swear. I felt that, he whispered. Yeah. Morgan pushed herself up into a sitting position and threw her arms into the air. No kidding, you're blowing on me and it's creepy. I'm not blowing on you, Eli said, his voice trance-like. You're not blowing on me, Morgan stated. Then what's blowing on me? It came from your general direction. The attic isn't haunted. My paper did it. Morgan stared at Eli and the room was dead quiet until she burst into laughter. Eli, however, wasn't, was not laughing at all. Eli, 
Your paper did it? She could barely get the words out. I'm not lying. The more Eli sat there staring at Morgan, stone face, the less she felt like laughing. She caught her breath. There's probably a draft or something, she said. It, like, went across your paper, hit me in the face. I swear, though, if you're doing it, don't. Okay, so she's losing her temper. She's getting a little frustrated. And Eli's saying, hey, it's not me. I am not putting this breath on you. It's coming from my paper. It came from my paper, he said deliberately. Something about the way he said it made her reconsider his claim. Even though it was just about the most ridiculous thing she'd ever heard. More ridiculous than her daydream about Emily stealing Eli's drawing pad. Okay, she said, do it again. Eli hesitated. He reached for the pencil a few times before finally picking it up. He let the tip of it hover over the paper, ready to draw. The pencil was a millimeter from the white surface when Morgan heard the success, successive beeps that always rang out when the front door opened. Kids, Katie called all the way from the first floor. Come down for dinner, I got takeout. Eli pulled the pencil away from his drawing and slipped it back inside its case. To be continued, Morgan said. All right, so it seems like Eli is drawing something. And when Morgan asked him, hey, what are you drawing? He, he said, I don't know, it's, I'm, I'm just drawing it. And all of a sudden, cold drafts, cold breezes, cold winds are coming out of his drawing pad. And they're hitting Morgan in the face and they're her hair is falling in her face and she has to keep flipping it back because it's blowing in her face. And she's getting frustrated and he's like, it's not me, it, it's coming from my drawing pad. And Morgan, of course, doesn't believe this at the beginning, but then there's something in the way that Eli is saying the words or what he's saying that she starts saying, okay, well then I'll consider it, just prove it to me, make it happen again. And he's just about to draw on his drawing pad and Katie comes home with supper. So they have to leave the, uh, the attic and head on back downstairs. All right, that's it for chapter five. Make sure you complete your re uh, writing response forms and we'll continue on with chapter six next. Bye guys.